Sir, I have finally reached Earth. Any sign of intelligent life down there? I'm not getting any readings yet. Oh, oh, hold on. I'm getting something now. Yeah, no. No intelligent life. Dang. I thought this one looked promising. Well, move on to the next one then. Copy that, sir. Well, hello and welcome, you lovely people of YouTube. My name is Elon Osborne and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And a few weeks ago, when my family and I moved into my brother-in-law's unoccupied house temporarily while we wait for our new house to be built, I came across a sleek black soundbar just chilling. Upon further inspection, I realized it was a first-generation Sonos Beam. Huh. Then I was searching around for a power strip a little while later and I came across these babies, a pair of Sonos One SL speakers. Double huh. But then I remember... Oh. No. So. Nos. Came out with a new generation two. Whoa. Hold on. T time out. The Gen 2 Beam came out on October 5th, 2021, so at this point, I wouldn't exactly call it new. Yeah, well, we all can't get things right when they come out, okay? So, whatever. And on that note, let's talk about... What's in the box? Not much, folks. In a very Apple-worthy packing job, there is the Beam itself, some literature, and this box, which has an HDMI cable, an HDMI 2 optical adapter if your TV is a tad older, and a power cord. Ta-da! Specs. It's the same exact size as the original Beam, 25.6 inches wide, 2.7 inches high, and 3.9 inches deep, and still has that elongated pill shape with its sleek rounded corners and concave top. The touch-sensitive play slash pause button is still there as well as the ability to skip or go to a previous song by swiping. You can mute or unmute this microphone button if you decide to use or not use the supported Alexa or Google Assistant or even Siri since it also supports Apple AirPlay. It still has the minimalist single LED on top, but the big difference is the front. The fabric grille of the Gen 1 has been updated with a perforated polycarbonate grille, which will win over pet owners since it doesn't attract hair like the fabric of old. That and being polycarbonate means it's more rigid and will last longer than its predecessor. The Gen 2 boasts a CPU that is 40% faster, which adds more sophistication to its phase algorithms when communicating with other Sonos speakers, but also supposedly improves its audio processing capabilities as a whole. The rear connections are exactly the same, but one major difference, which is something I'll get into in a minute. You got your power cable port, sync button to easily add this to an existing Sonos system, ethernet port for a reliable wired connection, and an HDMI port. But this HDMI port now supports eARC, which also means that it now supports Dolby Atmos. Oh snap. But not only that, as of November 16th, 2021, with an update through the Sonos S2 app, support for DTS Digital Surround is available. But you'll notice I didn't say DTS HD Master Audio or DTS X. Before Sonos products like the Arc and the Beam supported DTS Digital Surround, customers sometimes experienced no sound at all if they played Blu-ray discs through the Beam. And unfortunately, that is still the case, my friends. Without DTS HD Master Audio support, I heard nothing coming out of the Beam when I watched Jumanji The Next Level, Hot Fuzz, and Gladiator, both from 4K and standard Blu-ray discs. In fact, the S2 app even says you are receiving an audio signal that is not supported. And this is a problem for me personally because I'm old school and still like to watch a lot of content from physical media. But don't fret. There is a simple fix if you just go into your TV's audio settings and choose PCM audio over ARC. Then I heard Dwayne Johnson loud and clear. The Beam also creates its wireless ecosystem through Wi-Fi, which you connect to initially when setting up the S2 app but it's Wi-Fi only. There is no Bluetooth support, which might be a deal breaker for some. Set up. One of the easiest setups money can buy, folks, because it's all done with the easy to follow steps on your phone. 
First, plug the provided HDMI cable into your TV's HDMI port labeled ARC or eARC. Then as soon as you plug in the Beam's power cord with the S2 app open on your phone, it will automatically detect it and you'll be able to add it to your Sonos system. One difference during the setup with the Gen 2 is that it now supports NFC protocols. So you physically touch your mobile device to the Beam itself for added security. It will most likely have a software update, which I do recommend performing during the setup. Then it asked me if I wanted to run TruePlay, which is Sonos' room calibration software. But as of this recording, Sonos still doesn't support this feature on an Android phone. To get the best accurately tuned experience for your specific room, you need an iPhone. I just happened to own an iPhone, so that was just luck of the draw on my part. And get this, on the actual Sonos support page, it says this, and I quote, if you don't have a supported device, you can borrow one from someone else to true play your products. As long as your Sonos products stay in the same location, true play only needs to be completed once per product. Wow, nothing about we're in the process of including Android support for TruePlay in the near future. No. So what's with the Android hate, Sonos? Just doesn't make sense to me. Anywho, once everything is set up and tuned, there are a few more minor customizations you can make, like adjusting the treble and bass from minus 10 to plus 10. And there is such a thing as dialogue enhancement, which by the way is this icon here if you weren't already familiar since it's clearly not labeled as such. And there is such a thing as the night mode feature, which lowers the bass response during action scenes in case you don't want to disturb anyone that might be sleeping. From here, you can decide if you want to set up Google Assistant or Alexa by signing into your personal accounts. How do they sound? To start off, I know this Generation 2 model has been around for about five months now, so in doing some research and watching or reading various reviews on it, the majority of them were done obviously right around its launch in the fall of 2021. Since then, there have been some updates to the app, firmware updates, DTS support, etc. So even though this Gen 2 Beam now supports Dolby Atmos, when I was watching Dune, which does have a Dolby Atmos soundtrack, I honestly didn't notice too much of a difference between the Gen 1 and Gen 2. But here are some things that I need to take into consideration. The living room I tested it in is very wide and narrow. There's a lot of space on either side of me. So those passive radiators on the sides and any side firing audio processing is probably not going to be as effective as with a living room that has walls closer in to allow more sound being bounced around. Some of the reviews I watched mentioned how the Dolby Atmos support makes it wrap around better and has a wider, fuller soundstage. And even though it doesn't have any upward firing drivers, it had a broader sense of scale when it came to height effects. Eh, I mean, maybe a little. It did seem like the Gen 1 beam was a tiny bit more localized, with audio sounding like it was coming from the beam itself, whereas the Gen 2 sounded more like it was coming from the boundaries of the TV, especially during action scenes in Dune. But a wider soundstage than the Gen 1? Not so much. But don't forget, I might be missing out on that altogether because of the shape of my current living room. So at least through my testing, pound for pound, the Gen 1 and Gen 2 audio performance is almost identical. But I think that might be because of the latest firmware and software upgrades that happened in the last couple of months. Unlike what some of the other reviewers may have heard back in the fall of 2021. But of course, Sonos has mostly discontinued the Gen 1. And it's only $50 less than the Gen 2, so if you were thinking you were going to save a little bit of money by getting the Gen 1 instead of Gen 2, eh, that's not really the case. So Sonos has pretty much gone out with the old and in with the new regarding the Beam, but that's a good thing. Being eARC and Dolby Atmos compatible and DTS compatible now, it's set up for the future, whereas the Gen 1 is definitely not. But besides the Beam itself, remember at the beginning of the episode when I mentioned I found a pair of Sonos One SL speakers? Yeah, let's get into that for a minute. If you weren't aware, Sonos systems communicate so well with each other because once they're set up, they are locked in. Like a loyal Labrador retriever, Sonos speakers won't be recognized elsewhere if you try to add it to another system. So since these One SL speakers still thought they were in San Francisco back in my brother-in-law's apartment, I had to perform a quick factory reset. All you gotta do is make sure it's unplugged, 
press and hold the sync button while you're plugging it back into power, wait until the LED on top starts blinking orange, and then you can let go of the sync button. But once I had both speakers in this orange blinking LED mode, setup was such a breeze, it's so intuitive. I just opened the Sonos S2 app and it automatically asked, hey, do you wanna add the one SL speaker I see to your system? Why, yes, yes I do, thanks. Once that was done, it automatically recognized the other one SL. Of course I would like to add that to my system too, yay. And once the second was set up, Boom, it automatically asked if I wanted to make the 1SLs my surrounds. Please and thank you. It then plays a chime out of one of them and you tap which speaker the sound is coming out of. In this instance, it was the rear left speaker. So simple, right? Although after doing this a few times for various reasons during the review of both Gen 1 and Gen 2, each time I got to this particular point, it would time out and fail. But then I'd just tell it to try again and then it would sync just fine within a matter of seconds. So I'm not sure why I always had to do this step twice, but it is what it is. So after the complete system with surrounds was ready to go, I performed the true play calibration again. And dude, Sonos' software is second to none in this regard. They have really taken psychoacoustics into account when dialing in their software's calculations, knowing that we are in fact binaural creatures that hear out of two ears. Because when I sat down dead center in the listening position, the immersion was by far the best I've heard from a 5.0 soundbar system under $1,000. If sounds had any panning involved while watching Dune, the movement was seamless, so smooth. But the only downside is that I'm not usually sitting straight down the center in the love seat. When my wife and I are watching something together, I'm on one side and she's on the other. So that same binaural psychoacoustic immersion effect went away. And also, luckily in the S2 app, you can turn down just the surrounds, which I ended up doing since my ear was significantly closer now to one of the speakers than the other. And the immersion was still present, don't get me wrong. It still sounded leagues better with the surrounds than it did with just the beam on its own. But it's too bad that the amazingly trippy binaural immersion effect is only present when sitting straight down the center of the system. Now, my brother-in-law unfortunately didn't have the wireless Sonos sub. And as it states on their website, although it is again cryptic, it goes down to 25 hertz, which will add some seriously cinematic low frequency energy for your TV and movie watching. But I can't vouch for that since I didn't have one on hand, nor did I want to fork over the shocking sticker price of $749 just to find out. But I will say this, the bass from the beam itself is surprisingly good. Is it King Kong worthy bass? Of course not. But you can boost the bass if you feel so inclined, although when I tested this out myself, it started to get real muddy real fast after about plus three on the slider. But what the Beam does provide is clean bass. It's not going to wow you like the Klipsch Cinema 600 subwoofer, for example, but there's a lot to be said about clean, undistorted bass, and the Beam reproduces just that with flying colors. And speaking of bass, before Sonos got into the home theater game at all, they were obviously one of the go-to brands for music, being able to connect any existing speaker for an easy whole home audio experience. So I don't think you'll be surprised when I say that music sounds incredible through the beam. Vocals are some of the cleanest, most natural warmness I've heard in a soundbar. Bass continues to be clean and not overbearing, and highs extend into the sizzling territories without being harsh or too bright. Again, very impressive for a soundbar that is less than $500 on its own. And as I normally do, I ran it through the gamut as far as different types of music to listen to. Classical, movie soundtracks, alternative, folk, electronica, and even melt your face off metal. So I don't think it's gonna be a surprise when I say that the Beam is still going to be a great option to stream music through. Recap. Believe it or not, this is actually my first experience with a Sonos product at all. So I went into it being a little skeptical since I'm not usually one to automatically like a product because somebody told me to. But I am actually very impressed with the results. Just like how Apple acquired Beats, I'm surprised they haven't followed that up by acquiring Sonos too. Since I would honestly call Sonos the Apple of home audio with top-notch software and hardware that seamlessly talks to each other, stays connected to each other, 
utilizes a very smart app and costing a little more than similar products because they can get away with it, just like Apple. But the ease of setup, taking you step-by-step -step through the intuitive app, the psychoacoustics and incredible results from running TruePlay, the sleek, minimalistic look of their products, Sonos is starting to rub off on me. I have yet to be impressed with any soundbar I've heard that has upward firing at most speakers. But if the Beam can sound this good with the 1SL surrounds and true play room calibration, maybe the Arc is all it's cracked up to be after all. I hope to find that out myself very soon. But overall, yeah, from this point forward, I'd recommend the Beam in a heartbeat for anyone needing a great soundbar solution under $500. Sure, it's not gonna shake your walls with its bass performance, but it is clean. As far as Atmos height virtualization, meh. True play or not, physics are physics, and you just need speakers pointing up if you want any height effects added to your soundstage. But for its size, the Beam outputs a sound much larger than you'd expect. Dialogue is the best I've heard, although the speech enhancement feature is kind of weird. Some of you may like it or need it, but what it does is EQ the center channel, taking away some of the low frequencies and then boosting some of the mids. So to me, it made it sound a bit thin and processed. While it is very subtle, it's noticeable enough to make me not want to activate it. So I don't. Regarding Sonos as a whole though, I do wish they were more transparent with the technical specs of their products. Why so secretive? Why so vague? And adding DTS Digital Surround back in 2021 hopefully means they'll be adding support for DTS HD Master Audio real soon for geezers like me who still prefer physical media. They're pretty much the only audio company out there right now that offers a high-end soundbar system that doesn't support both Atmos and DTSX. Sony and Samsung do, so get with the time, Sonos, come on. But besides that, I'd have to say Sonos has won me over. Now on my wish list would be a head-to-head -head look at the Sony HT-A9 with the sub versus Sonos Arc with surrounds and sub, but not just a head-to-head -head product showdown, but a battle of soundbar room calibration software. Eh? Sony supposedly set the new standard for audio processing with the HT-A9, but Sonos's true play blew me away. But these days, who knows when I'll be able to get my hands on both of those things simultaneously. Now, if you already have a Gen 1 Beam, do you need to rush out and upgrade to the Gen 2? No. If anything, if you already own a Gen 1 Beam, your next upgrade should be the Arc. The Gen 2 is a perfect choice for those who have yet to get into the Sonos home theater options, but wanna start small. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the Sonos Beam Gen 2. Do you think it's still relevant in 2022 as a solid, fairly affordable soundbar solution? What's your experience with Sonos as a whole? Are you a fan or not so much? Let me know, fam. Let's start a conversation. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening.